皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to the Gogo Nihon Live and Study in Japan live show. It's now 8 p.m. in Japan and we are live streaming from the Gogo Nihon Tokyo office.、Uh, just to tell you a little bit more about myself,、uh, again, my name is David e Rossi and the CEO and co founder of Gogo Nihon.、Um, what I'm doing now actually is not very important, but、uh, I was a person like you that、uh, nine years ago、uh, was living in London and was thinking to go and live in Japan. Uh, I did a lot of research. At that time, there was not a service like Ogo Nihon, so I had to struggle a lot to find the right information about、um, accommodation in Japan, which one was the right language school for me, etc. etc. etc.、Uh, based on my experience and also the fact that I've been、uh, living in Japan for nine years, I want to、uh, empower you with the knowledge I have. Uh, about living and studying in Japan. So I think I can you know, answer your questions,、uh, give you all the information you need in order to have a smoother process in、uh, applying for、uh, a language school or just、uh, coming here to live.、Uh, today, the,、um, we have,、um, you know, it's the first, it's a pilot,、uh, it's the first session we have all together.、Uh, you will have a chance, of course, to ask me questions. I've, I've already prepared some questions that you guys have、uh, asked me on Facebook. Um, before this live, so I have,、uh, I have a few questions to start with. But at the same time, I invite you to comment to this live streaming,、uh, comment uh, on Facebook and YouTube because we are in,、uh, in both places at the same time, and also Instagram. So we are streaming in,、uh, in three places all together.、Uh, so please, guys, let me know what are your questions because I'm here to, to help you and answer you、um, live.、Um, after my session, I will actually invite one of our、uh, former students. Uh, he applied from Sweden, he came to study in Japan with Gogo Nihon, and、uh, I will ask you how and、uh, why study Japanese、um, and come to live in Japan has changed his life. So I want to ask Felix,、um, our Swedish student that is here today,、uh, how studying in Japan changed his life. And at the end, we will have also a real estate, a Japanese real estate. Um, Mr. Sasage, that will give you some precious hint and things to know in case you want to rent an、uh, apartment、um, in Japan when you come. So, let me start from、um, uh, the question you guys already asked. So,、uh, Maria asked on our Facebook page、um, if、um, we are thinking to add more、uh, languages for our service. So, at the moment, we offer help in English, Spanish, Italian. Um, Swedish, German, and French.、Uh, we are an Indonesian too. So at, at the moment, we are not planning to add any language、uh, in a short time. We have students applying from all over the world. So even countries where, for example, they speak Portuguese or they speak other languages can、um, ask us questions、uh, if they can use English. So that's absolutely no problem.、Uh, Mireya asked,、um, they want advice for someone that won't learn Japanese. Uh, and travel to Japan but isn't financially stable?、Um, so, this is a very important question. Actually,、uh, we receive a lot of inquiries of people that、um, want to come to study in Japan but they、um, don't have the money yet.、Uh, they ask maybe for student loans or、um, they want to find to Japan even though、um, the, um, they, they don't have enough finance to, to, to move and maybe study for six months.、Uh, so, first thing to say is that in order for you to get a student visa, Uh, you need to prove Japan immigration to be uh, financially uh, able to sustain yourself for six months at least. And, and why is that? Because Japan immigration、uh, want to make sure that you o k n when w you're when y o u in Japan,、uh, you, can, you, know, you can buy food, you can pay for the rent, and you can uh, uh, just have a normal life.、Uh, of course, you can find a part time job. Every student in Japan is allowed to work up to 28 hours per week.、Um, Uh, from the very first day you arrive in Japan. So that's really, really、uh, something good for you to, to think about. However, you still need to have this、uh, initial、um, amount of、um, money, and, and you usually show it through,、uh, for example, the balance in your bank account or, or your pay slip in case you're working.、Uh, let's say that you really want to move to Japan tomorrow, but you don't have this amount in your,、um, in your bank. So, what, what would you do? My suggestion. Uh, first of all, obviously, is to maybe postpone a little bit your arrival to Japan to make sure you have、uh, enough money to,、um, to have a, you know, like just a, a normal life without you know, having too short in money. Maybe if you have too short in money, you need to、uh, 
leave Japan earlier than you should. So uh, it's okay if you're not ready to go now, maybe you can work part-time in your country, you can save some money and then come to Japan after six months, one year, um, in order to, um, to have a, a, a longer stay in Japan and, without less, and with less worries. Um, on the other side, if you're not sure if the money you have are good enough to sustain your life in Japan, you can always ask us. Uh, it's really case by case. It depends which city you choose, which type of accommodation you want, which school you choose. So it's impossible for me to give you uh, an exact amount uh, for, per month or per, or per six months or per year. Uh, it depends on your habit too. So you can always inquire us and then we can tell you if, how much you, you need to think to have uh, to fulfill your, uh, you know, your, your uh, wish to, to come and study in Japan. Um, what if you can't save money and uh, that start to be a little bit uh, difficult of course moving and studying abroad always re require an initial investment uh, i always tell people um, doesn't matter if it's japan if it's korea or if it's another part of the world uh, try to study abroad um, if you haven't if you're 30 and you haven't done it yet that's it's not too late like go go now and go as soon as you can because studying abroad uh, it's an investment you do on yourself uh, you put um, uh, maybe you invest some money, but this money, uh, first of all, you learn a language. Second, you grow so much faster uh, than everyone else that doesn't do study abroad. Uh, so you need to think about this uh, money as an investment to get a better job, to have a better life uh, in the future. So really try everything you can to, uh, to get this money. Uh, some countries give a scholarship to students. For example, Swedish people can get... Uh, uh, a loan from the government called CSN that's specific to the country. Norwegian people also have uh, country-specific loans, etc., etc., etc. So you want to also check into your uh, country-specific uh, available loans. Uh, unfortunately, as Gogo Nihon, we, uh, we don't give loans to students, so uh, we're always going to check with you and advise you when is the right time for you to move. Uh, moving on with questions, uh, I have another question that asks, um, about getting new job opportunities as a foreigner. Um, this was asked by uh, Nororu, uh, probably a nickname. Um, and um, so job, actually, as I said, every foreign student that comes with a student visa can legally work part-time up to 28 hours. And this happens from um, the first day you're in Japan. Now, let's say that you are a completely beginner with Japanese and you don't know um, much. Uh, of the language. Are you still or not? Um, well, uh, I would say think about two months uh, waiting for um, you reach the right level at least to have a conversational basic Japanese. Don't forget that the schools are very intensive, four hours per day, so two months actually could be good enough to get a restaurant job. Um, like very simple, maybe you work with customer for a long time, but you are like the image of the shop, right? They want a Western waiter, uh, maybe even able to use English with um, with the uh, with the uh, with the other customers, or maybe you use your native language because it's a Spanish restaurant, it's an Italian restaurant, uh, it's a uh, Mexican, and so on. So those foreign restaurants are very popular in Japan, and and it's easy for us uh, in the in the food industry pretty pretty soon. Another alternative is um, um, teaching, uh, especially if you're a native English speaker. Uh, it should not be a problem to find a paid, uh, well-paid teaching job, uh, even though you've never done teaching before. Uh, that's, that's, that's a fun part, right? You say, I've never been teaching, I've never been working, I've never been modeling. But actually, our students are able to do this just because Japan opens you uh, so many opportunities. It's really like a place where um, people have the chance uh, or of their life or... Um, Type of chances that they would not have in their countries just because being a foreigner uh, in Japan and studying Japanese already make you bilingual immediately. If you know another language, of course, you are trilingual already um, and uh, give you like a diversity. Like Japanese people need some uh, Western person, uh, of course, to teaching language, to work in a restaurant, etc. 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 So, those are the most common jobs for. Uh, um, uh, Western people that come to study in Japan. I'm gonna just take my mobile one second uh, because I wanna um, to see if you have um, any any live question. Uh, let me see. Let me see here if there are comments. Okay, so Andreas is, is saying that you can get a, an easy job at Yamato. 
uh, yes. Um, again, there is a very high percentage of students that uh, are working part-time, and this is increasing, increasing, increasing. Don't forget that Japan has won the bid for the Olympics 2020, which makes demand for um, Western foreigners in general, foreign workers, as high as has ever been. So either you are looking for a part-time job during your study, for translating maybe some documents or, or just helping some companies to understand more the Western world, or you are uh, looking for, to stay in Japan for a full-time employment after you learn the language, that's the best time ever. Because now it's 2017. Let's say you apply now and you come to Japan like middle, late 2017. Then you have one year and a half, one year, one year and a half to perfect your Japanese. And then it's when companies are going to hire massively people for the Olympics. So I want to just you to think about how great is this time to work in Japan, part-time and full-time. Um, if you have questions, always uh, you can ask me now because I'm reading the, the Facebook feed and also I switch to the, to the YouTube feed as well. So um, you guys can, uh, can just um, let me know if you have any questions. I, I, st I still have some, uh, some questions left from, uh, from before. Okay, um, let's see. Checking, so um, you guys are watching, but there are not many questions yet. So what I'm gonna do is to go through the other questions that, that were asked before uh, this live uh, from our followers on Facebook. Uh, so there is a Daniel that actually saying, don't suggest uh, one of our school because he had, uh, he had this uh, uh, bad experience. The school is uh, Kansai College. And uh, um, I mean, the reason why I'm also saying here is because we really try our best every time to, to suggest the right school uh, to, to people. And, you know, again, we are very sorry about uh, this uh, uh, experience that Daniel had. And we invite Daniel to let us know what was wrong so we can also address this uh, on the live show next time and maybe uh, able to advise people with more details in the future. Um, so thank you for the feedback. And then there is Coral in the French page that asked uh, that his father, so Coral, Coral, sorry if I uh, pronounce your, your name not in the right way, maybe Coralie uh, from France, that's saying uh, good morning to us and uh, she's applying right now with Gogo Nihon to go to Japan and uh, um, her father is uh, very anxious, you know, is worried about showing his tax records uh, or his bank information. As I said, Japan immigration, in order to give you the visa, um, will um, will ask you for the... Um, financial information to make sure that you have enough money to um, come to Japan and you know have a six months of life even though you don't find a, a part-time job. Of course you can work part-time but you cannot be sure in a sense. So Japan wants to make sure and you know show this um, bank statement or tax return, it depends case by case. Um, we do what, uh, what the school and immigration ask us to, 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 to do and to collect of course. And um, um, I think, you know, there, sh there, sh there should not be worries. So the reason, it's clear, right? The reason why this is asked is because uh, Japan immigration needs to, to know that the person has enough found to sustain himself or herself for at least six months. And if the person cannot do, you can still use a sponsor, which usually is one in your family that says that I'm going to pay for uh, the, um, the, the tuition fee for the, for the six months for my daughter or for my grandson, etc. Um, however, um, if, uh, if, if, if you still feel uncomfortable, for example, you can hide sensible data like for things like that, we can guide you to the process, but you still need to show the balance um, because that's what immigration needs to, to know. At least you need to show a minimum amount that is required by them. Uh, no worries, this data will be treated with the maximum security possible, uh, won't be shown to third parties, of course, only the school and immigration will be seeing those data and it's necessary in order to process your answer your, your question and, and you know, your, your dad also feel less worried about it. Um, okay, so I'm checking again our um, Facebook feed to see if there are any new questions. Let me see. Okay, let me see if you guys have questions. Okay, there is one more comment. And I'm just loading it up. Okay. So there are many questions. Uh, I'm also asking David uh, from our marketing that is helping me today. 
Uh, if there are any questions, check your Facebook messages. Okay. So okay. So you guys asking on uh, Facebook? Uh, they're asking on Instagram. Okay. So from Instagram, there are questions, and I've been informed by David through my Facebook Messenger. Yes. Okay. That's pretty smart. Okay. So a question from Instagram. Is it cheap or not? Algi is asking, is it cheap or not? I would like to go there. Okay, so for pricing, uh, our help is a, is, is, is a free help, so it's a free support. However, uh, you have to pay for the flight ticket. Usually the main costs are flight ticket, accommodation, and uh, um, schools, tuition fee. So being cheap or not is very relative. For example, I would say it's way much cheaper than going to America to study. It's way much cheaper than going to Australia or Canada to study. Uh, but it's more expensive than just staying in your country and maybe live at your parents' home and you just have your mom and dad cooking food for you and you stay there. That's, of course, it's cheaper. However, again, as I said, you should see this as, a, as, as an investment. Uh, regarding the cost, we are talking about, for example, for the flight ticket. Uh, Algi, I don't know which country you're from. Maybe if you can share which country you're from, I can give you more details about the, like the fares and things. But usually, uh, for example, from Europe to... Um, to Japan, you can find return tickets for, let's say, a three-month study period of 600, 700 euros. Then you add about uh, a thousand euros for a shared room in a dormitory, which is the cheapest accommodation. Of course, if you want a private room, if you want homestay, if you want a, a luxury hotel, then this fee increase. Let's say a thousand for the cheapest accommodation solution plus 600 for the flight. And then the school is another 1,200. So we are talking about a total of uh, 2,800, let's say 3,000 uh, for uh, basic expenses. Then you have to add food, which is in Japan is actually pretty cheap. You, you can usually eat for uh, four, five euros, five, six dollars at lunch. Uh, dinners, uh, again, could be very cheap. It depends where you go. So you're going to spend less than you usually spend in your country uh, for the food. So whatever you spend in your country, you can expect to spend less. Uh, again, it really depends where you're from. So if you, if you know where you're from, then I can um, uh, give you more, more information. Uh, one other question, uh, Jorinen, uh, if we take up part-time job during studies, how much is average pay? Very good question. So in Japan, uh, the average pay in Tokyo is around 1,000 yen per hour, which is $9 with the exchange rate we have now and 8 euros, I would say. Uh, again, the best thing for you to do is search 1,000 yen 1,000 yen, how much they are in your currency. Uh, however, in Osaka, uh, it could be a little bit less, like 950 Kansai, 950 uh, yen. That's really for, a, uh, for the entry-level job, though. Um, sorry, I said an average, but I, I wanted to say an average for an entry-level job. So let's say you work in a restaurant. That's what you should expect to get first. If you work as a teacher, we double it. It's about 2,000 on average. Uh, if you work as a model, usually modeling, uh, pays Ichiman, which is 10,000 yen, uh, about $90 or uh, 80 euros for a basic job, really like you don't have experience. And then you can pay way much more for more advanced job, even $500 per day if it's a proper shooting. And then you say, I've never been modeling. I've never been thinking about modeling. Believe me, me neither. But I did modeling eight years ago when I was in So it was just super random, but they actually contact me, they stop me in the street, they ask me for doing some money, they pay me very well. Once I even was part of an audience at a TV show, I was not doing uh, anything besides being a foreigner person in the TV show, clapping hands at the right time, together with other foreigners they picked. And I was paid Nimanen, which is 20,000 yen, uh, or $180, under 60 euros. Uh, and this happens all the time. It's not because I was lucky. Uh, foreigners that never thought about modeling, Never, never thought about doing it. They get stopped and they uh, have these opportunities. Now, am I suggesting you to come to Japan and try to be a model? No. Uh, like this is really like something on the side. And I know still, like, uh, but again, it's not something you would really want to count off. Like I, I know people that became professional models in Japan uh, and they, they came as a student here. Again, it's really opening up opportunities that you wouldn't have in your country. However, just think about it as a, as a side job. Check uh, YouTube. Okay. Um, before I go to YouTube comments and I come back to you, you, your YouTube comments, I want to answer the last one on Instagram, which is Sandio Ambara. Uh, can an ex-trainee 
apply to become a member of Kogunion and study Japanese there. Okay, uh, yes, so our service is not just our service actually. Studying in Japan as a language student is for everyone. So you don't need to be a student in your country, you don't need to be a high school student, you don't need to be a university student, you don't need to have any um, Japanese preparation or anything like that. We have people, actually the oldest student we had, he was 65 from Ireland, and he came here to study for two years. He just wanted to, you know, he, he had work enough and he was super happy about his, his life, uh, but still wanted a new challenge. And then he came to study in Japan, he was 65. And the youngest we had, he was, I think, 13, 14, it was not long-term students because student visa could be difficult for someone that young, but it was um, a, a short-term student, a short-term um, study trip student for the, for the Youth Japan study trip, right? Uh, and then the average, of course, is between 20 to 24, I would say. We have many 18, 19, but also 23, 24, but we still have a lot of 30 years old. So you can really uh, come any one of you can come and can, any, any one of you can, can apply to study in Japan. Now, I'm going to go to my YouTube to see the comments there. Um, or I may ask David for help with this because YouTube mobile app is so nice that it doesn't show me the comments. So yes, David, could you please forward me the, the comments on um, yes. a Messenger? Thank you. Okay, so while we do that... Um, give you some time. Again, um, please let me know your questions. I'm here to reply to you. If you have doubts about studying in Japan, living in Japan, this is Davide Rossi, the CEO of Gogo Nihon. Uh, I've been living in Japan for nine years. I came as a language student. I founded, I co-founded, and uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Gogo Nihon that helps people from all over the world to come and live and study in Japan. So I want to share my knowledge with you. That's the purpose of this uh, live and uh, I just want to see if I can help you uh, based on my experience. Uh, so please guys um, ask me questions. I will be more than happy to to reply to you. So I'm, I'm getting message from David. Also I see Facebook. Okay so chats on Facebook. Uh, I'm sorry I'm really bad with pronouncing name and you guys come from all over the world so please bear with me. Um, so just if someone, I'm just reading live. I'm just so you can ask me really anything, okay? If someone cannot get a student visa because of lack of funds and has to leave the country after 90 days, is there a probation period before we can return to Japan or can return immediately after noon arriving to another country? Okay, so um, you're saying, I think if I read your question well, you're saying you don't want to get or you cannot get the visa. Doesn't matter if what's the reason. You don't have a, you don't have a student visa. You came as a tourist. You leave the country once, you want to come back immediately to stay at the 90 days. Okay, so first of all, you need to understand that the visa is a tourist visa. So as the name says, you are supposed to do tourism, right? Because it's a tourist visa. Saying that if you want to see Japan for 90 days and you leave the country and then you come back once within one uh, calendar year, they usually let you do that. Uh, just because, you know, 90 days plus, plus 90 days, it's possible. Uh, on the other side, if you keep doing this, they could actually stop you when you try to re-enter for the X amount of time, uh, for X amount of days, just with tourist visa, because they say, hey, I know, I know you love Japan, I know you like really visiting Japan, but you've been uh, for 300 days in the last year with a tourist visa and you always stay in Tokyo, you don't even go to other cities. Is it really tourism? So it's really like uh, depending on single situation, but usually one trip out and in, it's fine, especially if you really are visiting. Uh, then again, uh, Chats is asking how difficult and expensive it is to get a cell phone in Japan compared to just getting a mobile Wi-Fi pocket. Depends on the length of stay. If you stay long term, no problem in getting a, a cell phone in Japan. If you stay short term, you can still get it very expensive. I suggest you to go for a mobile Wi-Fi pocket. Uh, but again, it's you know it's, it really depends on, on the stay. There are also many SIM cards right now. So my suggestion if, for example, you stay three months, which I think is what, what you're planning to stay, um, my suggestion is to uh, come to Japan with an analog phone, and then uh, there are many options for uh, data cards that are going to fit your phone, like Micros, Nano, uh, Mini, any type of, of, of data card. And um, you can ask us again if you want the best, etc. Et et 
Um, I'm gonna go to the YouTube comments, sorry guys, on Facebook, uh, just to, to be fair a bit, and let me see. Okay, so wow, there's a lot of comments. Okay, yes, okay, I like it, I like it. Okay, thank you guys, first of all. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you are enjoying it. If you like this show, uh, if you want more people that are interested in Japan to get this type of support help, if you know anyone that is thinking to study in Japan, please share uh, this Facebook Live or this uh, YouTube video. We're also on Instagram. Like it or share it because, uh, I mean, I enjoy doing it. I really enjoy to share uh, the knowledge I developed in, in eight years running Gogo Nihon. I enjoy to share the knowledge I developed being in Japan nine years and came here as a student, I really enjoy, so I would do anyway. But if I see that a lot of people are sharing and liking it, uh, I'm gonna do more than this. Uh, and I'm gonna do for longer. And I'm gonna call more people in to give you advice. So it's really like about the feedback, right? That makes people more motivated in doing things. So if you guys can, please share it, please like it, and let me know how much you're enjoying it. Uh, but thank you for the questions. So I'll go back to the questions that we have on YouTube right now. So Spike Gal, hey, I have a quick question. I have a disability. Sometimes it's difficult for me to write because of joint issues in my hands. Is there much support for disabled students at Gogonion? Okay, so um, we have uh, uh, students that have um, um, they need special assistance, and uh, we actually uh, need to deal with each school depending on each case, right? So first of all, we need to really understand your problem. And I'm not saying that you should disclose your uh, your the assistance you need uh, right now, but you need to let us know in details. And then what we usually do, we, we, dis we discuss with the school and we find, if possible, a school that um, can assist you for your needs. Because we want you to get the best uh, when you're in Japan. We don't want you to come and then realize that uh, maybe it's not as you thought. And that's not just for, for you, it's for everyone that has a, a question like this, okay? Um, usually, you know, it's, it's possible to find a, a, a solution however there has there's been cases in the past where it was not impossible but we always try to ask the schools about it uh amma amar uh hello i'm from iraq can i study japanese language in tokyo for two years and i want to stay at work there after i complete the course i already have four years college again computer science so uh you have the requirements yes um you want you want to stay in work of course you need to find a company like everywhere in the world that is willing to hire you um the best way, of course, is learning the language. And as I said, this is the right time for everyone to come live and study in Japan. That's because Japan has won the bid for the Olympics. So there's going to be so much openings coming out. Uh, just for actually right now, we have so many students that are finding employment in Japan compared to the past. Now, of course, it's not 100 percent. It's maybe not even 80 percent. I'm not saying that you will surely find a job. Please understand that my words are um, are enlightening a trend that right now Japan is getting more and more open to foreigners. It's way much more common than before to hear about a student that um, has found an opportunity using his English and Japanese, using his Italian, Spanish, Swedish, etc. and Japanese, uh, using his skills and Japanese, because we also have skills, we also have personalities that Japanese people don't have, uh, different personalities. So what we can bring to Japan is... Um, it's something they need, especially if they want to get uh, their 21 million tourists for the first time this year, uh, beating, is the record year for Japan in tourism. And they plan to increase about uh, X percent every year up to the Olympics where they really need so much foreign workforce. So this is the best time to come and study uh, because in one year and a half, two years, you will, you will be prepared, you will be speaking Japanese fluently, and that's where Japanese companies will like foreigners the most because of the Olympics. Um, so yes, um, Amar, you have the requirements. Spikey Gal, um, what sort of part-time jobs do your students sometimes work? I have answered to this before, so I'll go very quick with this. It's uh, restaurants, uh, bar restaurants, so food industry. Uh, very easy, very common, two months. You start from zero Japanese, two months. You get a Japanese good enough to, to be the type of waiter they need. They need a waiter with a... Uh, with a Western attitude, they don't really hire you because you're best in the service. They hire you because they want more Western people, and maybe they need someone that also can help in English or or, or Spanish in case of a Mexican restaurant or, or Italian, etc., etc., etc. Teaching English, uh, Italian, Spanish, 
usually a language in high demand in Japan. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult than, than, than restoration, the restaurants to do, and modeling or, 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 or just uh, appearing on TV and things like that also happens as part-time job. Uh, Matti, uh, how are other guys in there? Most JV loggers are not very friendly in my experience. Hopefully, non-YouTubers are friendlier. I mean, I, I don't have this, this feeling. I mean, I have a lot of foreign friends here, uh, JV loggers uh, much, because actually, I'm not a, a vlogger, that's my first ever, uh, not presentation I do online, but this kind of things that like I try to interact with people is the first time. Um, so I don't classify as a vlogger and I, I don't know them. Uh, I've been running Gogo Nihon for the last eight years. I've been living in Japan for the uh, past nine years. I came here as a language student. I studied abroad in Japan uh, in 2008, 2009. That's why I think I can give you advices, but I'm not, um, uh, a YouTube person in, a, in the in the strict term of it. So, I think guys in here are, are exactly like uh, people in your country. You find people you get along with, and you find people you hate from the first very first second. Uh, it's really like a, a matter of maybe uh, go knowing more people and find the people you get along with. But I have absolutely not this uh, this idea personally. Uh, Lo and behold, uh, my finances are good. I want to take all the money I need to Japan during my study. How can I bring it all to Japan? Don't. I have a Japanese bank account. Okay, so your finances are good. I wanna you wanna use them in Japan, right? Because you've been saving money or you have money uh, and you wanna use them in Japan. That's pretty straightforward. Um, basically, you pay the school first. Uh, you pay the accommodation first. We help you with this process. And then when you are in Japan, first thing you will do, you open a bank account, and we tell you how to do it. Uh, and the school source is very helpful with that. And then when you have the bank account, you transfer the remaining funds. Now, it takes about one to two weeks to open a bank account. What do you do in those two weeks? Because you, you haven't got a bank account yet. But you can withdraw money with a credit card. You can exchange money in your country or, or at the airport. So you have Japanese yen in cash to use. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, thousands and thousands of people have done it before. So um, it works. Just, just you're going to be set up and then you have a bank account and you can transfer money. Uh, again, guys, uh, just for people that have joined this live streaming uh, recently, uh, we are uh, in the, this is the Gogo Neon live show. Uh, it's an Ask Me Anything session. So I'm Davide, and I'm the CEO of Gogo Nihon. I've been living in Japan for nine years. I've been running Gogo Nihon for eight years. Uh, I came in Japan as a language student, and I want to share my knowledge with you to help you to take better decisions when you uh, come to Japan, come here, I'm here in Tokyo, uh, come here to, to Japan to live and study. Uh, so if you have any questions about living and studying in Japan, you can ask me, and uh, I will uh, give you the answer you, you need. I'll do my best to do that. Um, Spike Gal uh, asking, what's the average age of our student, of our student? Uh, students, I've already answered to this before. I'll just go uh, again pretty quick. Uh, the average is between 20 to 24. Uh, we still have a lot of people that are 18, 19, uh, or some younger people that come to our U Japan course, for example. But we had an oldest person that was 65, Irish person that went to study, and uh, and the person was super energetic. We say in Japan, Genki, and, and and it was great to have this type of students. We have many students that are 30. Uh, I actually came in Japan when I was 26, so now you can also guess my age. Um, and, and, you know, it was perfectly fine. Like, it was the time for me that was the, was the right time. Uh, so don't be worried if you're like 30. Uh, maybe you have already a job. You just don't like your life. You want to you wanna learn a new language. You want to grow up as a person. Uh, Any time is actually the right time. Uh, I would say the only difference is that younger you are, faster you learn the language. Uh, I see 18 years old kids that speak Japanese in six months fluently, like for me, it would have taken one year. So you just need to uh, put this in account if you come when you're 30. You're going to be a little bit slower than the 18 years old kids. However, um, it's going to be an amazing experience. doesn't matter the age you have. Um, the reason, like, actually why... This is another question that they ask me a lot. So I'll... Um, pardon me if I uh, make myself a question and answer here. So like, why did you start Gogo Nihon, right? Um, I actually came to Japan, and for me, it was very difficult to uh, understand how to apply for a language school. So when I was in London, I was living in London, I decided to go to Japan. I wanted to go to Japan to study. Uh, however, the information on the internet was really scattered, and it was very hard for me to understand uh, which school would have been the right school for me, uh, 
which uh, accommodation would have been right, how much should I pay for that, uh, what, what, what about the location, and even, even if I was trying to talk with the school, the uh, information about the paperwork was so confusing, I almost gave up. I'm a person that very, very rarely gives up, but even me, I was almost giving up through the process. Uh, eventually, I wanted to go to Japan so much that I did everything by myself. I spent several, several months fighting with the documentation and the information, like maybe eight, nine months. And eventually, I arrived in Japan. When I arrived in Japan, I realized life here is so great. You learn so much every day. Um, and it changed my life. Like the, I had the best experience of my life and I'm still living this experience like after nine years. So I wanted to have more people to do that. I wanted more and more people to have the same experience I had, have the best experience of, life, of, uh, of uh, their life like I had. That's why I decided to make a service, uh, a free service like Ogori Hon that helped more people to come live and study. And that's why I think I can really help you uh, answering your question. Uh, Carlos from Mexico, Carlos from Mexico, uh, maybe you answered this question before, but can you work and study in Japan at the same time? Yes, you can work up to 28 hours per week, which is a lot, it's four hours per day. It's a very good part-time and you can work from day one. Uh, Tristan, uh, I'm currently studying Japanese in Sapporo, thanks to Gogoni On. I'm 28, I don't have a degree after I finish, I want to be able to live and work in Japan, is that possible? So first of all, first of all, Tristan, thank you very much for choosing us, thank you very much for watching. Uh, and thank you for all of you, of course, for watching this live. Uh, we are on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Please ask your questions and please let me know if you like, like Tristan is doing. Uh, um, so Tristan, thank you very much for choosing Gogo Nihon. I hope you're having a great time in Sapporo. Um, because you don't have a degree, you have uh, more, uh, it's a little bit more hard, it's a little bit harder for you to um, get a student, uh, a working visa after the student visa. Uh, however, because you are 28, you may still have a chance. Let me explain this better. This is pretty important. So, um, in order to uh, get a working visa, usually, which is not 100%, otherwise I would say 100%, usually, you need to get a degree in your country first. Or, you need to get a degree from a Japanese university or vocational school. They're called Senmongako, which is just two years. So, for example, in Tristan's case, you could still go to a Senmongako for two years, learn something very specific like IT, Japanese animation, uh, cooking, something really specific, and then be able to work full time. Or if you end work in your country, for example, uh, five years or, or, or more, it depends on the profession. In this profession, you could still get a working visa uh, because you have proved experience in your country. So it's really, again, it's case by case. That's a very generic, information I want to share with you. It could be possible in your case, please let us know. Like with more uh, detailed information about which, which, what did you do in your country before um, coming to Japan and also let us know uh, if you are willing to apply for a Semongaku. We can support you with that. Semongaku is vocational school again. I'm going to Facebook now because David is telling me um, that we, there are some comments to, to check. And, um, and again, thank you very much David for uh, uh, for helping with helping me with this, uh, David is our uh, marketing coordinator. He's working from uh, the Tokyo office every day. He's also helping me with this live. It's 8 p.m. now, 8:30 in uh, in Japan. And uh, thank you for the extra help. Um, I'm checking the comments now on Facebook. Okay, so Matthew is asking. Um, what are some recommended sites to find a part-time part-time job in Japan? I know there is Gaijin Pot, etc., but there are there's any Japanese site targeted for foreigners? Thanks. Yes, you said one of the sites that are popular. Uh, I think there are many of those sites, actually. Uh, I haven't prepared a list for me. Uh, there is um, a site called um, uh, Sensei Sagasu and Find a Teacher, which has been uh, helpful for uh, people that were looking to be a English teacher. Uh, in Japan or Italian teacher or, or Spanish teacher, you can really teach any language. Uh, we will write the link on the description after this. Please, David, remember, remember me that. Uh, those, the Sensei Sagasu and uh, Finder Teacher. Uh, those sites are very simple because you can create your profile and then you find, uh, uh, you find students right away and you can teach a coffee shop or restaurants and get paid directly, so it's pretty convenient. Uh, if you search for jobs in Japan as well, uh, you find few sites uh, for foreigners. Uh, so it's actually not because if you make a search, you get a 
um, jobs in Japan for foreigners, foreigners um, work in Japan and things like that, you find a big list of, uh, of job sites. Um, but again, yeah, Gaijin Pot is also pretty useful. They have a newsletter. Uh, I suggest you to, uh, to have a look to that as well. Um, chats, uh, thank you for, for asking many questions, chats. Uh, do, you, do you have to have any prior Japanese knowledge before coming to Japan? Uh, how difficult would it be for someone who cannot speak Japanese to have a smooth trans, um, transition and learning experience? Okay, so I didn't know any Japanese. I studied something completely different at university. I was working as an IT developer in London and I came to Japan. I was 26, so absolutely no problem. However, we suggest our students to learn at least hiragana and katakana first. That you can do in your country within a few weeks, let's say a few months, in case you are very busy with your work life. So learning hiragana and katakana first on your own is okay, and you can come to Japan. Um, and then uh, you don't need to have uh, prior Japanese knowledge, but yeah, as I said, hiragana and katakana would be very... Uh, Emmy is asking, uh, do you think it's sustainable to both study and work in Japan without having to pay the course up front? Uh, I'm want, uh, wanting to come and study work, but also pay a course off. Thanks. Okay, so if you want to come with a student visa, which you need in order to get a, uh, the permission to work part-time, you need to pay six months up front. That's how, how far it's necessary. There's no way around of that. The, the only suggestion I can give is to work maybe part-time a little bit in your country, save the necessary money, and then apply a little bit later. Okay. Um, I'm trying to refresh the comments because okay so uh, is there any other comment maybe that should uh, reply or can you read, read Spanish I can understand Spanish I, I cannot read it okay. but I understand it so you, you write to me in on Facebook right yeah can you write me okay um, true tribulations is asking so guys I'm gonna wrap up the um, ask me anything session pretty quick because we have here two guests uh, one is Felix a former student of Gogonion, and I want him to share his experience of coming to Japan and have seen his life change. Uh, how did he, how he's doing right now? Uh, what meant for him coming to Japan to study? And also, we have a real estate, uh, a Japanese real estate, sharing some tips about people that want to rent in Japan. So I don't want to take their time as well because you can also ask them one or two questions if you can. Uh, so I will read those latest com those last comments and then I will move to the next session. And don't forget, we will be live again. So if you don't want to miss the next live, uh, if I miss your question and you want to ask questions or if tomorrow you, you think about 3,000 questions you would have asked, uh, you can just um, subscribe on YouTube to get notification when we go live again uh, or like our Instagram and Facebook so you get to know when we are live. And I think, David, on Facebook, you can also subscribe. Uh, can you tell me how it works again? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a little option at the top right that mm -hmm. you can click on. And then you can click on uh, subscribe to notifications. Okay. So if you go on the top of this window, right? Is it the live window? Yeah. Yeah, if you go to the top of this live window, you should see a uh, uh, subscribe to notif notification. Um, area which if you do if you click on that then you will be notified when we go live again uh, it will be next Monday uh, at between 5 to 6 p.m. Japanese time so a little bit earlier than this time um, so I'm gonna go through the last to the, the last questions uh, true tribulation is asking if I'm applying for a university in Japan to study for a year can go on help me apply for a student visa so at the moment we can only only offer support to the partner schools that you see on our site that's because in order for us to support in an effective way, we need to develop a very close uh, relationship with schools, which are uh, vocational schools, language schools, and universities as well. So you can already see there is one university on our sites and more are coming. Um, our support is really 360 degree support. So we follow you from the time you're asking us, I wanna uh, go to Japan and study. So you have no idea where, what, and how. Uh, to the time you are in Japan and actually you have questions about accommodation, uh, why these things is like that, you want to meet Japanese people, we help you with events, we make events for you so you can make a lot of friends. So it's really a 360 degree support and because we follow all your application, we need to be partnered with the school. The school has to trust us also to give you advice in your native language on the school's behalf. 
Um, so the, the question is that depending on the, on the university you want to apply. So please let us know where you want to apply and we can tell you if we can support or not, okay? Uh, Dormunor, uh, FP superior. Okay, so I think you want to, you're asking, sorry, because I'm not Spanish, but I understand a little bit Spanish. Um, if, you, if you need previous experience to work in Japan, um, and the, the answer is would be better, of course, like obvious, but uh, I've worked as an Italian language teacher, I'm from Italy. Uh, I worked as a language teacher uh, for uh, one year, uh, kind of full time, and then a few more months part time, um, without uh, having, having, and I was not even thinking I would have ever been a teacher the day I came to Japan. That's when, I, because I say, you're going to have so much more opportunities just because you're a foreigner, you're learning Japanese, you're going to be bilingual since you're learning Japanese, and you can give to Japan something they don't have. Um, and then, again, other question. Uh, yeah, because they're asking for formation professional. So I kind of guess it right. Um, so you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to have a formation professional, you don't need to have a professional training to work in Japan. However, again, having this experience will can be beneficial. Uh, then Francisco, as a student, we can, uh, like Disney. Uh, uh, we there are students this kind. I think Disney has been. Uh, David has been to Disney more than I did. How many times did you go to Disney, David? Once. Okay, no. So I beat you. Okay, I wrong wrong thinking. Um, okay, so there are students discount in Japan. And uh, also, depending on the school you apply, you are eligible for the wide set of student discounts or the smaller set of student discounts. So usually museum, cinemas, etc. as a foreign language student, you can access to student discounts. Uh, I will ask this to Felix because Felix has a, um, uh, an experience of studying in Japan. Um, like it's, it's actually still, it's actually studying now at a vocational school. So maybe you can give us some more information about uh, discounts. However, usually theater, um, cinemas, and also um, Toei, which is a, ty a type of lines and bus um, underground, and not all of them, like the Toei undergrounds and the Toei buses, they always have a discount for uh, uh, language students. So it really depends where you're located and which school are you going, you can get those type of discounts. Um, Gabriela is asking, do you know anything about university courses in Japan? I might correct. I am current, currently in the first year of uni and wanted to know if there were any scholarship available. Yes, yes. So uh, there are scholarship for foreign students uh, that don't cover the full tuition fee, but they cover, for example, up to 30%. We can help you with that. So you can come and study in a university in Japan using only English as well. So um, again, it's important you to learn Japanese, but in case you want to focus more on the education rather than the language, uh, you can, we can still help, but in general, you have opportunities to come to Japan and study, for example, business, economics, in English. For four years, you get a degree which is recognized in your country too. So that's also something very interesting that you could do. Uh, last question from Seth. Uh, what makes Gogonion different from other study programs such as Genki and KCP International? Okay, so first of all, um, we are not a language school itself. We are a free service that helps you to find the right program for you. Uh, so we've been, uh, in the last 80 years, we've been visiting schools, we've been uh, looking for the best institutions for you uh, to study. We've been selecting them, we've been visiting them, as I said, we've been talking with teachers, we've been interviewing students after they went there to get a more accurate and precise feedback. So when you ask us, I wanna be as fluent as possible in one year, I wanna go for the cheapest school as possible, I want to become an IT programmer and I want to work in a Japanese company. I want to study six months, just have fun, learn some Japanese, but then I want to go back to my country. Each person of you is different. Is different. Each person of you has different needs. So there is not the best school. There is not the best program for everyone. You need to tell us what you want to achieve coming to Japan. What's your dream? What's your, uh, what would be a success for you? And then we can advise you what's the best school. So we are really, in that sense, we are very honest. Uh, and, and, and above the fact we are a single language school. That's why we can advise uh, freely in this way. 
So that, that's, a, that's a very big difference. Plus, uh, we can cover all um, Japan. So we, we cover from uh, the South Fukuoka to Sapporo. Um, we also help you with accommodation. Uh, we help you with uh, uh, events. We do events uh, in Tokyo and Kansai right now, but we're also looking for expand the location of our events. Um, we support you through the whole process from the beginning to the end, and we don't ask you uh, any cent just because that's how our, our service is. Um, so that's, I think, what makes our service very special. But here, I'm not here actually to... The purpose of this is not to... Uh, sell you anything or talk about our product. I really want to share my knowledge uh, with you guys to make you um, to empower you to take better decisions uh, and decide, you know, if coming to Japan and when to come to Japan and, and, and things like that. That's why I want to more than talk about our service. Uh, I really want to answer your questions. Um, then I think uh, I've done with my Q&A. Again, thank you very much for watching this part. We haven't done yet with the streaming. I'm gonna move on the guest for today. Thank you very much for watching um, my part. And uh, if you enjoyed it, what I ask is to like it or share it with people that uh, you think are uh, interested in living and studying in Japan. The video will be uh, stored live on Facebook and YouTube, will disappear from Instagram. That's because how Instagram works, but it will stay on Facebook and YouTube, even if it's alive, it will stay. So if you share it now, uh, people are gonna be able to see it tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And uh, as much as I like doing this, actually I feel really energized by so many questions. I really wanna keep doing it uh, for longer and I will definitely uh, have other sessions in the future. As much as I wanna do this, I really ask you guys to uh, show your appreciation with likes and shares because when I finish this, I will, uh, I will check for sure how did it go and many likes and I see many share I will put even more effort and I will feel that was worth for someone of you to, to listen to this. Uh, saying that I would like to invite here uh, our first guest uh, is uh, from Sweden is uh, his name is Felix and he was one of our former students so Felix let me call Felix very, very quick okay Yes, uh, hello. Okay, so first of all, uh, Felix, um, I would like you to introduce yourself. Um, so I would like you to introduce yourself and also tell us how studying in Japan has changed your life. Okay, uh, well, my name is uh, Felix and uh, I'm from Sweden. I've been here in Japan for uh, three years, three and a half maybe. And uh, yeah, I have, yeah, it has changed my life forever. Ever since uh, I came here in uh, 2011, uh, I didn't even know that you could study abroad, like in Japan. I was like, uh, I was studying Japanese in uh, high school, my third year, and uh, John from Gogunion just came up to our class actually and had this presentation that you could uh, use Gogunion to, uh, to go to Japan. And uh, I didn't know what to do after I graduated, so uh, I felt like, yeah. I should, I should try it. So me and a friend of mine just decided to, to look up Gogunion and they helped us with everything, the schools, the accommodations, uh, uh, how much you have to pay, how much money you need to, to save up to be able to go there. And since I'm from Sweden, we get this you know, CSN that David had mentioned before. And uh, yeah, it's just been a blast. Everything, uh, yeah, since I came here, it's just been super fun, super exciting, everything's new. And as, an, as for now, I'm studying uh, network engineering at the vocational school. So uh, uh, it's a dream of mine, and uh, I'm just happy that I could be a part of it. Okay, so uh, I want to know a little bit more, like how your life is different now compared to, for example, the time you were in Sweden. Of course, you know, yeah. you also grew up because three years is a long time. But I, <laughs> what what would you say, like, you know, is the thing you're really uh, proud of or really changed your life? Like the fact you learned Japanese and, and you're here. What, what what's really uh, the, the most important thing. I feel like my confidence for sure has become a lot better. I, I was a bit uh, uh, shy when I was in Sweden and I didn't really, you know, I had friends but I didn't really talk to uh, people I didn't know before. And since I came here and started uh, studying Japanese, it just opened up my world so much. I get to, I got to know a lot of different people from around the world. So the, yeah, definitely it has changed a lot since then. Okay. And then we had a question before, it was oh, yeah. about uh, the, the student uh, discounts, right? So yes. I, I also wanted to ask you, by the way, guys, if you have questions to Felix, um, you can ask them now and I'll try to pick one or two of them for him, okay? 
Okay, so what about the student discounts? Yes, uh, as far I know, is, of, as you mentioned before, the cinemas, they have, uh, I think it's like 1,800 yen for a, a normal person and 1,500 yen for, for students. And uh, for example, uh, bowling, I know they also have student discounts. And uh, yeah, that's uh, as much as I know, actually, I okay. don't really... <laughs> Uh, look around too much. Okay, but yeah, we yeah. have yeah, we said cinema, we said bowling. Yeah, uh, I know for sure that the toy undergrounds yeah, 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 yeah. and buses yeah. they give a pretty yeah. uh, steep discounts for, for for students. So if you know for your monthly card or if you want to move with those uh, uh, transportations, you can have a discount and, mm -hmm. uh, and and probably you know, a few more things like that. You know, you yeah. can you can still get a discount. Yeah. Um, um, David, do we have a do we have a question for Felix already? Uh, not for Felix. Okay, so I have, I have a question for you actually because we're studying now in a vocational schools and yes. we received many questions uh, regarding vocational schools uh, in, in, in this um, uh, Ask Me Anything session. Yes. Uh, so how is studying in a vocational school uh, in Japan where I believe most of the other students are Japanese, right? Yes, I mean, in the school I'm studying at, we are four foreigners in my class. Mm -hmm. We are 44 people in the class. Okay. Yeah, so we are basically a minor minority. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like since I've been studying Japanese for almost two years, mm. uh, so my Japanese skills are enough to, to get past. I mean, of course, there are some technical terms that you will have a hard time understanding, but they're really helpful. I mean, uh, Japanese people are so nice. I mean, if I just ask them how they're in this, uh, this kanji or whatever, and they will help me. Mm. list so and of course everything is in Japanese all the classes uh, well except for English lessons but mm. yeah basically everything is Japanese so it's uh, it's fun it's it's a lot of fun and you learn so much mm. uh, not just uh, about, about the thing you, you study but the language itself as well so yeah it's amazing like going like to university or you know vocational yeah. in Japanese and you just do naturally like you know you don't you don't even sweat anymore yeah. because you've been in Japan for so long yeah. And you've been like studying the language before and now it comes so natural yeah but you don't realize um, that each single day doing this type of life you grow up like 10 times more than you yeah. were studying maybe in your country in your native language mm -hmm. with like, like you are studying with people from all over the world or with japanese people yeah with people that are so different from you you can learn so much every single day yeah. and they learn from you too yeah i believe that you have so many chances to to like teach them something right so they, they, they probably love to be around you yeah, and uh, it's so fun because you learn, like, you get to know people from, as you said, around the world, not mm -hmm. just uh, Japanese people, but if you study Japanese, there's, there will be people from all over the, the countries and mm -hmm. everywhere. And it's fun because you get to know them as a person and mm -hmm. you get to know their culture as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the Japanese, it's, it's about the whole thing as an experience. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you study Japanese here, it's going to be a lot easier because you see all these signs everywhere. Uh, all in Japanese, like the kanjis, the hiragana, the katakana, so you get like, even if you don't want to study, you just, you know, oh, I can read that actually, oh yeah, okay. So you, you study while you go to the school as well, which is, which is great. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, question for you. Yes. Dear Felix, yeah. uh, how long did it take for you to feel comfortable in Japan? That's a very good question. That is indeed a very good question actually, because uh, I had, as I mentioned before, I studied a bit Japanese when I was in high school. Uh, but it was seriously, I, I started from scratch when I came here because I didn't feel confident at all. And I would say actually three months to get like a real feel around the, the whole uh, experience thing and, and the language, of course, because I was living, living in a guest house. So we were eight people, four Japanese and four foreigners. So I could use both English and Japanese to, to the people who didn't speak English. And uh, that, of course, helped me a lot to grow with the language as well. Mm. So I would say depending on how you are as a person, but, but two to three months. Okay. And that's, that's so funny because I, I, I was going to say this is so personal. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it is a good, very good question, but at the same time, I bet if you ask to that 10 different people, you get 10 different answers. So in my case, it was one day. Because when I came here, I was like, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know, amusement park. You know, it was so great that I just knew that my plan to stay here for six months and then go back to the UK was like gone at the same time. But it's a really a personal thing, like uh, depends on your personality or, or yeah. your experience. The people you meet at the beginning also, of course, like you say, thanks to the guest house, you made it easier. Probably if you yeah. would have taken, in your case, an apartment would have taken longer, but other people yeah. maybe are more comfortable in getting uh, private time and so on. So um, 
I, I want to go back. Um, I want to answer some questions pretty quickly, which is not necessarily related to you, but I think they are pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, one is uh, um, Christina wants to come in, was, was, wants to come to study for six months uh, with a Swedish friend and would like to share an accommodation. What kind of accommodation do you recommend us? Which is the most convenient? So uh, I would say share house, sharing share house is perfect, and that's actually um, is what uh, Felix has just said. You, yes. you, you, did you share the accommodation with you? Yeah, uh, that's my Swedish friend and I. Yeah. Share okay, it. so perfect. can you tell to Christina the experience of sharing the yeah. share house room? With your friend, which is perfect because you did it. So. Yeah, uh, actually, me and my friend, we we knew each other from the like before we came here, but uh, not necessarily like we weren't like this close. But uh, I I would say it was actually because it's cheaper to share a room with with someone than to live alone, and uh, you you'll never be alone. Well, you can be alone if you really want to, but you feel like this. You you're going through the same things together, like the same struggles, the same fun parts, etc., etc. So. I, I totally recommend uh, share house or okay. at least share a room. Very good, very good. Uh, Hassan is asking, I'm from Egypt, 43 years old. Can I come for study Japanese? Uh, the age is not a problem. As I said, the age is not a problem. It really depends, you know, uh, from your education history, etc., etc., etc. So please contact us and let us know uh, the, the, your background and then we can tell you. But in, in general, 43, 30, uh, 25 is not a problem. Of course, when a student uh, when a person wants to come to Japan is, for example, 43, um, the, the, the list of documents will be just a little bit more uh, comprehensive, but it's still possible. Um, okay, that's another question from Gabriela yes. uh, to, for you. Might, might be a weird question, but I don't, I don't think it's a weird question. Might be a weird question, but I'll ask anyway. Did you get used to the food quickly? They eat a lot of fish. Did you not grow tired of it? <laughs> okay. Uh, well... I'm, I'm not picky with food at all. I, I love, uh, especially Japanese food. And uh, yes, they eat, they do eat a lot of fish, but there are so many different uh, foods that you can choose from. Like uh, you can choose uh, all, all the fried stuff is great. Fried chicken, they have, uh, you, and not just Japanese food, they have Korean food yeah. as well. So, I mean, no, I wouldn't say that I got tired of eating fish because they, it's so much to choose from just it's just great. Yeah, actually, I think this is a problem of how uh, Japanese food is seen um, abroad. Like, we think Japan um, has mostly sushi. People are seen like, we eat pizza every day, which is not true, obviously. <laughs> we eat pizza maybe twice a month, right? Um, no, but that's what I want to say is that um, um, most of the, uh, the, the, the most famous restaurants, Japanese restaurants abroad are sushi restaurants, but that doesn't mean that Japanese people eat sushi every day. No. Uh, Japanese food itself covers everything, uh, meat, fish, vegetables, everything. There is, like Felix said, there are great, there is great international food here. Uh, you know, there are many great Italians, many great uh, Mexicans, Spanish food, French food, it's everywhere. It's really international, Indian food, Thai. I mean, Asia is here, so you can have Thai, uh, Vietnamese, Indian, Korean, Chinese, any corner. So absolutely food. It's never been a problem, no, and it's no. cheap, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's super cheap. I'm from Sweden, and we have so expensive restaurants that it's it's scary. So when I got there, I was like, really? You can eat for like 500 yen, and you get full? Yep. That okay, I'll good. take the last two questions for Felix. Uh, you guys asking a lot of questions. It's fantastic, great. Thank you very much. But also, um, we need to move move up to the next to the next guest, uh, which is a uh, uh, Japanese real estate, which can. Uh, address some of the concerns about uh, uh, renting in Japan for a foreigner. Okay, so Chet is asking, Dear Felix, do you have any advice for newcomers to Japan that you didn't know when you arrived? Mm. Mm. Something that you found out being in Japan. Well, there's uh, so much that I didn't know actually when I came here, but uh, yeah, well, I was thinking the, the bank account things because when I came here, uh, and I, I think I chose the, the Sumitomo Ginko thing, mm -hmm. and they told me that you had to stay here for at least six months before you could open up a bank account that you could actually use. Mm -hmm. I mean, to do, like put in money or mm -hmm. uh, take out money, etc. Uh, so I was like, okay, that's what I thought. But uh, afterhand, I actually realized that you could go with another bank, like mm -hmm. UFJ. Yeah. And they were like, oh, if you arrived yesterday, they would be like, yeah, you can open up an account mm -hmm. here. So, uh, yeah, I would say uh, probably the bank account because I couldn't find a job because I didn't have a bank account. Okay. First. 
So that so, kind of <laughs> yeah. you, you lost time with that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So make sure that you know the exact information about opening yeah. a bank account and how long does it take and don't maybe just ask one place and, and stop there. Exactly. Um, Maria is asking, okay, I said, I said I only took, I don't take new question, but that's pretty funny. Maria is asking, do you have Japanese friends? Of course, <laughs> I have. <laughs> I don't have any Japanese friends, but just kidding. Uh, yes, I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do when you speak the language, you live in Japan, you know, you can actually, it's, they come to you because they really want to meet people from different countries. So it's really, really easy for you to make Japanese friends. Last question, oh, sorry. Yeah, and I was going to say that the Gogen Honey are always like, they have a lot of events that you can go to. That's how I met a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. Like half, uh, half of them are foreigners and half of them are Japanese. So I would suggest go to Gogen Honey's events if you want to meet new people. Yeah, I mean, we would <laughs> love to get people from all over the world that yeah. mix up with our Japanese uh, and mingle with our Japanese uh, friends. And, you know, it's a great environment yeah. uh, to, to be. Uh, last question is, <clears throat> It's the most challenging one because this is going to be not just on live, but it, this video will stay oh. and then we can check it up <laughs> in one or two years uh, and see, you know, yeah. how, how, yes. how, how, how your world has become reality. So what's your goal in Japan? Oh, actually, I had a lot of different mindsets when I came here, but uh, my goal right now is, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm studying network engineering mm -hmm. here. And uh, I actually did study that in high school as well, like touch the touched it a bit so uh, my goal was first just to learn the language and then go back to Sweden and start working which I did uh, I studied here for one year then I went back to Sweden and I worked for one and a half year maybe and then yeah as that day I was just I just fell in love with the country so I just had to come back here so, so you need a, a actual de degree to find a good job here or in some in most of the cases anyways so my plan was to, as I do now, study networking, engineering, and look for a job. I'm actually going to start looking for a job next month okay. with my school. And hopefully get an employment here and uh, at least work for three years for now. Okay, so we look forward to having you here again. Yes. Let's say like, you know, in, a, in one year or so, and then you can share this extra step in your, in your career, in your life. Yes, hopefully it will go according to the plan, but you never know. Yes, of course, of course. Maybe it could even be better, yeah. you know? Okay, exactly. great. Okay, so Felix, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it and good luck with everything. Thanks okay. for letting me stay. Okay, and now I'll... This is our Ooh. Japanese friend, yes, Mr. Sasage. Konnichiwa. Sasage, konnichiwa. So I, I will be... Um, ask, Sasage will, uh, will, be, will be talking in Japanese and then I will, uh, I will translate to you first what, which type of advice is given to us. And of course, if you have questions, uh, you can ask, uh, and then I will, uh, I will tell Sasaki. What is this? Just a little bit of time, please. Please. Ah, the key thing is that, ah, the gaijin is that the no, ah, the food store is a gaishi. Ah, what is the most difficult thing? Ah, Japanese food store. So I'm asking him, what's the, what is difficult uh, in case for a foreigner that is looking for a real estate, like renting a property uh, in uh, in Japan? What's what is difficult? What is more difficult than usual? What they should be uh, aware of? Mm -hmm. ま、家を借りるを含めてとても so I say that uh, in Japan it's actually pretty common that owners are uh, in a sense not open to foreigners. Uh, for We're talking about the, the, um, the standard real estate. So like an apartment, a common apartment you want to rent. Um, usually, um, like 80% of the cases, 70-80% of the cases, um, uh, an owner uh, would say, I'm going to accept only uh, Japanese tenants. Uh, and that's just not really a reason why, like, in a sense, it's just the way they think. Uh, maybe it's very old style, and usually old, old owners are also older people than, uh, than, than, than the average. Uh, so that's one reason. And, um, and, uh, and then, um, uh, so you first of all, you need to know what are those 20% of places you can rent. Uh, and then I add to what Sasaka said, we are, we are talking about a um, normal apartment. On the top of that, there are share house, uh, homestay that you can uh, 
uh, rent without any problems because those places are for foreigners. So you have also a range of opportunities of, of choices that are prepared and ready for you. Um, so I'm asking if someone is renting for the first time in Japan, what should be careful of? What should be what should what should the person know that usually you don't know in your country? の例えば日本だと電車に乗って気持ちがいつもある。だから、あの、あの、悪気があってんじゃなくて、弱からだ。ルールを知らないっていうだけで、それをやぶってしまうと、オーナーさんはなぜやぶった。あ、外国人って言いかけんのよっていう気持ちを起きちゃうから、やっぱりその、ま
is not really your fault. So, um, you know, luckily there are real estate that care about that and they give you the, the English translation. Um, yes, I think that's very, very nice to, to, you know, to hear from Sasaga, which usually deals with uh, um, um, Western students. So I wanna see if there are uh, questions for Sasage. Um, oh, this is a good question from Lo and Behold. Uh, Lo and Behold is asking, I'll say in English first, then I'll translate for Sasage. Upon arriving in Japan on day one, will we have access to the apartment of our choosing or do we need to stay in a hotel for a few weeks? Moshi, まあ、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、